Um, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming back uh, from the break. And thank you, the steering committee and Prof Chow for this opportunity for me to share my work today. Um, today, I'm presenting on the epigenomics analysis of HCC. Uh, next slide, please. This work was supported by a CSIRG grant and the patients were part of the PLANET program. So their genomic and transcriptomic data were previously acquired, which I included in my analysis. Next, please. The main goal of this study was to investigate the enhancer dysregulation pattern in HCC. To do so, we performed ChIP-seq H3K27 acetyl um, because that's going to indicate uh, the location of active enhancers. And also, we also performed high C and high chip experiments to learn about the distribution of the, of the enhancers and also the chromatin loops. And um, like I mentioned, in addition to the epigenomics data set, I extended out to include a total of 90 patients to associate the epigenetic changes to the transcriptomic changes um, by including the bulk RNA-seq data. And I also analyzed the single cell RNA single cell RNA-seq data of 14 patients from Dr. Sharma's study that was published in Cell. Uh, next, please. So the very first step was to identify the genomic loci that presented epigenetic changes in terms of the shift and rearrangement of the active enhancer marks, mainly by, again, K27 acetyl histone marks. And we refer to them as differential enhancer loci um, to infer the functional implications of any changes that happen in enhancers. We associated the enhancers to gene promoters based on the detected chromatin loops between them. So that this was, this was so that we can interpret what will be the downstream effect of any changes that we saw in the enhancers. Um, I won't be going through all the figures in detail today, given the time limit, but just to highlight at the bottom of this page on the left, um, that's the SOX. Uh, at the bottom of this page, there are two genes shown, SOX4 and GPC3. On the left, um, we, it's, it's showing that only one of the SOX4 associated enhancers showed increased K27 acetyl signal in the tumor samples which made it differential enhancer locus, um, but other enhancer, other SOX4 associated enhancers were non-differential. But GPC3 on the other hand, um, all the associated enhancers were elevated in tumor. So it was more consistently changed between, um, between all the associated enhancers. So those are just examples of how the differential enhancers or non-differential enhancers look like. Um, altogether, um, we also saw a lot of de novo loop creation that happened in the tumor samples compared to the adjacent normal samples. And altogether, these differential enhancer loci and emergence of tumor-specific chromatin loops showed um, a high degree of genome-wide rearrangement of active enhancers and shift in the detected loops in HCC. Next, please. So based on the list of differential enhancers and the associated genes, we made two major findings, which I've summarized here, and I'll um, give more details later on. One was that the differential enhancer associated genes were informative in patient prognostication. And the other was about the discovery of epigenetic oncofetal signatures. Um, I'll explain both further in subsequent slides. Next, please. So regarding the first set of findings, the differential enhancers presented either an increase or decrease in H3K27 acetyl signal in the tumor samples compared to 
the adjacent normal samples. But not only that, we noticed that there was also patient dependent variability. The extent, it means that the extent of enhancer changes um, was not equal among the patients. So having increased uh, tumor associated en enhancers doesn't mean that it was increased in every patient that we studied. And we also saw that by grouping patients based on the enhancer signal intensity, we discovered that the more divergent uh, um, enhancer changes the patient showed, the patient showed a higher degree of dedifferentiation, higher rate of recurrence, and also shorter time to recurrence. Next, next please. Then we everything that I've just described was just the changes in the enhancers. And um, to see the downstream effect, we checked the expression changes of the associated genes. As expected, many of them, many of the genes showed uh, corresponding changes, meaning that the gain in tumor enhancer associated genes showed increased expression in the tumor and vice versa. However, um, Again, there was uh, patient-dependent variability. SOX4, for example, that's shown in the middle of this page, it showed high degree of variability in both enhancer and expression changes. And you can see that because um, in, the, in the graph in the middle, the upper panel, COO1, uh, that was one patient who didn't show any uh, K27 acetyl signal in neither the tumor or the adjacent normal sample. So this patient didn't show any change, didn't show, uh, wasn't a carrier of this enhancer to begin with. But another patient, HAP262, showed a noticeable increase of this enhancer in, in the tumor compared to the adjacent normal. Um, and so this is an example of patients showing uh, heterogeneity, epigenetic heterogeneity, even at a uh, differential enhancer that was uh, significantly different enough to be detected across multiple uh, samples. And likewise, the, we also saw heterogeneity in the expression changes. So the plots uh, below are showing the per patient, um, patient specific expression changes. So the patients um, that are arranged to the right showed increased expression of SOX4 in the tumor. Um, and then those on the left showed decreased expression of SOX4 in the tumor. So it definitely shows the heterogeneity of not just the expression level of SOX4, but how much of the SOX4 expression changes in the patient's tumor compared to the normal. And relatively speaking, compared to SOX4, GPC3, which is shown on the right, it, the, the changes and the basal level of both at the enhancers um, for the chip signal and the uh, transcription, transcri um, transcriptional signal for GPC3 expression was more consistent between patients. So that's, that's what this figure um, is showing. Next slide, please. Then we um, hypothesize that the patient variability or heterogeneity could be useful in identifying patient groups with um, some clinical implication, in this case, differential prognosis. So we grouped patients based on patient-specific expression changes patterns. So this is not really about how much more this patient is expressing certain marker genes, but it's more about um, how... So there is no uh, extent of increase, like I, I don't really care if it was increased by 100 times or 10 times, as long as it was increased, um, I considered it as, as a change. So it was a categorized patient-specific expression changes. And by doing co-clustering, we grouped patients um, into two, which is shown on the left, PC0 and PC1. And when we performed the recurrence-free survival analysis, which is shown in the middle, we saw that patient group uh, PC1, the blue uh, group, um, showed stronger, which who are the patients who showed stronger gene activation of our candidate genes. 
they showed worse prognosis with shorter time to recurrence. So it's just an evidence that, um, or, or, or an observation that the patient um, dependent heterogeneity or variability is, it, it is, it is, and it can be useful in, in clinical um, setting. Next, please. I will now move on to the second uh, major finding about the epigenetic oncofetal signatures. I, I'm personally really, this, this piece was really fun to study. Um, so we noticed that many of the gain in tumor enhancer associated genes, which whereby the enhancers, many of them are de novo uh, created in the tumor and unique to the tumor samples. Um, these genes were, uh, or, or many of them overlapped with genes expressed in fetal and um, apart from this, we also noticed that the gain in tumor enhancer loci genome-wide showed strong enrichment of HNF4-alpha binding motif, which is, a, which is a known marker for hepatic progenitor cell. Next, please. Um, so, and, and this was a curious observation because uh, fetal liver hepatoblasts came out and, I, and then it was also um, after I learned about Dr. Sharma's study. And, and then my hypothesis was that maybe some patients' tumors contain a greater proportion of hepatic progenitor cells or um, dedifferentiated fetal liver-like cells. So this is when I looked at the single cell RNA-seq data by Dr. Sharma to check how much of the hepatocytes from fetal liver, non-HCC liver, and HCC livers were expressing these, um, these subgroup of genes that I identified, which I, which I labeled as epigenetic oncofetal genes. And I also added in HNF4-alpha just to check the, whether they indicate different proportion of hepatic progenitor cell population. So the heat map um, that's shown in the middle is it shows the matrix of proportional expression values. So the, the brighter the cell is, it means that um, that particular um, gene was expressed by higher proportion of hepatocytes in the liver tissue. And using a simple clustering, we could see that there were two groups of HCC tissues. Here I've, I've um, labeled by using green and blue. Um, and the green samples was the one that was uh, non-HCC or healthy liver-like that clustered together with the healthy liver. And the other was um, fetal liver-like because they clustered together with fetal liver. It means that that um, these in each group, these liver uh, tissues expressed similar. Um, they they had they had similar proportional expression uh, pattern of this selected epigenetic oncofetal genes that I had. Um, and if you look at the lowest uh, row in the heat map. That's where the HNF4-alpha is shown. And we can see that the fetal liver-like tissues, those on the right, also showed higher proportion of cells expressing HNF4-alpha. So the, I think this is indicative that it is related to the hepatic progenitor cell population um, or those uh, tissues having more um, dedifferentiated cells. Um, Additionally, uh, we also noticed that the expression level of some of the epigenetic oncofetal genes were correlated to the serum AFB level of patients that was measured in CLIC. So putting everything together, um, I, I think the findings indicate that uh, there, there is a global shift um, in the epigenome that may accompany the oncofetal reprogramming of some HCC tissues. Uh, next, please. So to summarize, we, we saw that there is a genome-wide shift in enhancer distribution in HCC. We saw that, 
both the enhancers and the expression changes of the, of the associated genes were highly variable and patient dependent. And we also showed that the patient dependent heterogeneity is actually useful in identifying different patient groups with differential uh, prognosis. And we also made that interesting observation about the um, epigenetic driven oncofetal genes. Uh, next, please. Oh, so uh, thank you. That's that's all I have. I try to keep it really short. And of course, this study was not would not have, would not have been possible without a lot of people. Um, that I failed to include everybody's name here, but um, Prof Cha and Prof Fu, uh, they supervised my work for this. And Sinchi, she helped a lot in managing the projects. And George, George just left. But, um, both of them, uh, thank you for handling the samples and running the experiments. And of course, the genomics team who kindly shared the genome and transcriptome data with us. Um, and of course, all the surgeons and clinicians were involved. Uh, thank you. Let me know if you have any questions.